Today we're going to look at value in art. In art, value is not... Dear Lord. Today we're going to be looking at value in art. I will be looking at these practice papers, so go ahead and write your name at the top. And your classroom number, whatever your classroom number is, it begins with your block number and then whatever extra two digits belong to you. And write value at the top of the paper, any way that makes you happy. And value in art is not how much something costs or how much something is worth. In art, when we talk about value, we're talking about blacks, whites, and grays, the degree of light or dark in an artwork. And when we're talking about shading, we'll be talking about value. I want to start with a couple basic value exercises to help, um, to help you with this. So start by giving yourself a long, narrow box, nearly as wide as the paper, and then divide it in half. It doesn't have to be perfect, just kind of eyeball it, and divide those two halves in half, and divide each of those in half. Again, not perfect, eyeball it. What we'll be making here is called a stepped value scale. And yes, write it underneath since these are your notes. The idea between a behind a stepped value scale is that one mistake that beginners make is they will have dark, medium, and light values and not much of a range in between. And so when we're learning about values, we need to learn to make a range from the darkest dark to the lightest light. Also remember when we're doing values, we want to be way back on our paper and just buffing the paper with the side of the point of the pencil. Initially, you may still get lines but you don't want lines in your values, you just want values in your values. So you can see I'm kind of moving in small little circles here. And in this very end one, in this very end one, I want to build up layers of graphite so that I can get the blackest black my pencil can make. Notice that I'm going vertically, horizontally, diagonally, and not just back and forth, but in little ovals so that I don't make marks or lines in there. I just want to see how dark my pencil can go. Now this is a drawing pencil, so it may go a little darker than a pencil you have at home. But eventually, we will all have these drawing pencils and life will be good. And I figured for the sake of the video, it helps to use a pencil that will actually go dark. And then in the next box, I want to make a value that's almost as dark as that value helps now I have like a flat spot built up on the point of my pencil. Once you do that, you can go a little bit faster. I'm getting like an etching here. I must have been drawing leaves or something on a piece of paper that was on top of this one. You see my little etching coming out? What happens when you emboss the paper? So this one is dark, but it's not quite as dark as that one. 
And then, guess what? I'm going to go dark again, but not quite as dark. And I'll work my way down the value scale like this so that I get eight different values. Now, this last box down here, I'm not touching it. It stays white because white is a value too. But I want to develop a nice range of grays between my darkest dark and my lightest light. It gets tricky as you move along here. You'll find that when you get down to this one, you're not even putting the weight of, you know, down here, we're, we're pressing pretty firmly. Down here, I want to have such a light touch, not even the weight of the pencil is fully on the paper. And sometimes I kind of go back and forth. Like, if these two suddenly look a lot lighter than that one, I might, you know, add a little bit more darkness to this one so that I get a step there. And then that gives me a little, wow, that went dark. That gives me a little bit more to play with over here. The trick is just to get each one a slightly lighter value than the one before it. Now, if you want to work light to dark, you can. I just find it easier to work dark to light. Right now, these two are looking too close. I'm going to give that one just a hint more. I'm trying to get a smooth, even tone throughout that box. There we go. And then over here, just the lightest of light touches. Just like you're brushing crumbs off the paper with the point of the pencil without really letting it make too much contact at all. And again, make sure that you get that light tone throughout. This neat. I missed a spot there. Okay, so that is a stepped value scale. Make a stepped value scale, and then we're going to do something similar. So we need another long box like before. But this time we're going to make a graded value scale. In a graded value scale, we still want all of these different kinds of values, but instead of stepping down, we're going to make a smooth transition. So I'm still going to start, where's that flat spot? I'm still going to start with my darkest dark, but then I want it to change gradually as I move down this bar. And the tricky part is making it this long. You know, I could easily do this and make a sort of a short graded value scale. But I've got very few values in there, if I was honest, right? If I want a wide range of values, then I need to pull this out longer. When I edit this video, I'll as I work, I'm looking at the one above to give me an idea about how dark I should be at this point in my graded value scale.
I don't want to see a line between one value and the next. I want each value to blend neatly into the next. The hardest part is blending to white, to go so lightly that you can't see the line between where you've stopped putting down graphite and where it's just plain white paper. So as you're working on this, I speeded that up so that you're not spending forever watching me work. But as you're working on this, a um, couple things to bear in mind. I want the blend to be done entirely with a pencil. Don't get in there and start smudging it up with your fingers, okay? Use this time to really practice your value shading technique with just the pencil. Um, We're going to use this idea of a graded value because we're going to use it so much. We're going to make some ribbons that we can make, that we can use to practice these graded value scales. Let me push my paper up here a little bit so you can see. And here's the easy way to make a ribbon. Just make a graceful curved line and then make another line that's sort of parallel to it but maybe crosses over here and there, etc. When I join the two ends, that looks a little bit like a ribbon, but not completely, because the twist doesn't look exactly right. What you need to do is look at the outside of the twist and make a straight line between like the tops of the curves on the outside of the twist. So now I've got this and I can either I can erase either part of what I see as an X here, right? Here's my X. I can erase the the left side of either part of that, and it will be correct. If I erase this, it will look like it's twisting in one direction. If I had chosen to erase the other part, it would look like it was twisting in the other direction. And I'm erasing a little bit more than I wanted. So I'll put back the lines I wanted to keep. I'm going to keep that line. And I want to keep that line. See now how it looks like a more realistic twist? Let's do that one more time just to make sure that you have it. Where they cross over. Imagine where the curve is, like here the curve was coming like this, and I went on the outside of the curve and made a straight line between the two top points of the curves beside it. Same thing here. Curves going like this, I want to go on the outside of the curve and put a line like that, 
and then I can erase either one part or the other part. After I erase, I have to put back the lines I meant to keep because it's a tiny little space. Okay, so that's a ribbon, but the real point of this is to practice value changes. And so I want to go kind of like when you practice the piano, you go up the scales and down the scales and up the scales and down the scales. We're going to do the same thing with this ribbon, going up the scales and down the scales. And when you do it on the ribbon, it looks like, um, it looks like the ribbon is shiny. So turn your paper so that, you know, the natural motion of your hand is aligned with whatever it is that you're shading. And go from your darkest dark and just blend it out. This is a much shorter value change.